Greetings, I'm Dusty the Bin, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through a shader that I made using EV in Blender that gives out this painterly look. You can download this shader for free using the link in the description. Firstly, to be able to use the shader, all you need to do is to unzip the file and then click and drag the Blender file into your Blender session. Select Append. Go to Node 3. And just select all of the pseudo painter files. Click Append. Now to actually apply it into an object, create a new material, delete the principal PSDF and put in pseudo painter pattern and pseudo painter shader. Now to set the shader up, all you need to do is just connect the color output to each of the color input sockets the vector output to the vector input a normal map into the object normal and typical mapping setup into the mapping And finally, connect the two surface to surface. And now all you need is color input. And as you can see, instantly we get that painterly look right away. Now let's go through some of the settings that we can play around with. Firstly, in the pseudo painter pattern, we have pattern scale, which defines the size of the pattern. We have brush smoothness, which defines the smoothness of the brush strokes. We have transition roughness, which defines the roughness of the transition between highlights and shadows. And for now, we're just going to skip on texture displacement, texture blur, and blur resolution. Paper scale and paper opacity is to create a paper-like effect on top of the paint-like texture. The paper mapping setting is used to switch the mapping of the paper texture into a screen-based mapping. For example, if we move around the sphere, you can see the paper texture is also actually glued onto the sphere. But if we turn paper mapping to 1, the paper texture is now gone independent of the sphere. So even if you move the sphere around, the paper texture doesn't move with the sphere. Now onto the pseudo painter shader node, specular will give an extra highlight. The roughness, just like in PBR, defines the glossiness of the material. Metalness, just like in PBR, defines the metalness of the material. Each of the highlight, midtone, and shadow has a three different settings, which is color variation, gamma, and contrast. Color variation basically just means hue shifts.
Alternatively, you can also change the highlight and shadow color individually by adding a hue saturation value node or curve node or any other node that modifies the color. You can also use an image texture as a base color for the shader. Simply connect an image texture into the color input. And one odd thing about this shader is that you would actually connect the texture displacement mapping into the vector input of the image texture, which somewhat create a feedback loop. But in this specific case, it will actually work. Now to give this image texture a more painterly look, we're going to look back at the settings that we skipped earlier, which is texture displacement, blur, and blur resolution. Texture blur simply blurs the image texture that you use as an input. The maximum value here is 1, but you can actually type in a bigger value. Texture displacement actually displaces the image texture according to the pattern that is defined by this shader. If you change the pattern scale, for example, the displacement will change accordingly. There is actually another type of shader called Pseudo Reflection Shader which is used when you actually want to use screen space reflection on your painterly look. But keep in mind that this shader is much more simple and really only to be used if you want to use the screen space reflection. Simply connect the vector output to the vector input and the color that you want. And in the EV settings, turn on screen space reflection. There's a roughness setting and a metalless settings just like in the painter shader. And remember, you can still change the settings in the pattern node and the reflection shader will change accordingly. Lastly, I want to show you how you can make a paint-like brush stroke around the object. First, open the modifier tab and add solidify. Add some negative thickness. Deselect fill. Under normals, select flip and materials set material offset to 1 now under material add a new material slot use the same material that you use for the painter shader and then create a copy in the shader editor if you press N and go to options select Backface Culling, change Blend Mode to Alpha Clip and Shadow to None. And now if you go to the Pseudo Painter Shader and go down to Brush Effect, you can increase or decrease the value 
to make a paint like brush stroke effect. One thing to know is that the not very elegant thing about having this brushstroke effect is that you would have to change the color of the material individually. So if you want to change the color to green for example, you also need to change the brushstroke effect to green. Here's what I got after playing around with the settings a little bit more. Some bonus tips, you can actually use the brush effect directly onto the object material itself to get this kind of effect. Using the UV texture coordinate and putting the texture displacement mapping into the vector of a blank texture you can also paint your own texture and let the texture displacement setting to make it look more painterly. Once again, you can download the shader for free using the link in the description. But that's all I have for now. See you soon.